Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will try to implement the DFS graph traversal algorithm in Python. Suppose we are given this graph in which we have vertex A, B, C, D, E and F. And if we want to represent this graph in adjacency list format, it will be something like this. Okay, so here we represent our graph using Python dictionary in adjacency list format. So as you can see, for the vertex A, the adjacent vertex are B and C. For the vertex B, the adjacent vertex are D and E. And for the vertex C, the adjacent vertices are B and F. So here we can see that the adjacent vertices of C are B and F and similarly for all the other vertices. Now let's look at the variable required to perform our DFS traversal on our graph. So the first dictionary that we required is color. In color, so the color dictionary will keep track of the vertex which are visited and which are not visited. So basically we will be assigning three color to each vertex while traversing the graph which are white, gray and black. When a vertex is not visited at all, so we will assign a color white. So before performing DFS traversal, all the nodes will be white or all the vertices will be white. When we first explore a vertex, we will change its color from white to gray. And when all the adjacent vertex of a given vertex are explored, we will change its color to black. It means that the vertex is fully explored. For example, initially the color of the vertex B will be white. But when we first visit it, we will change its color to gray. Now we will explore the vertex D and E and F. When D, E, F are explored, we will go back by using backtracking to the vertex B. Now we know that all the adjacent vertex of B are explored, so we will change its color to black. So the next is parent. We will keep track of the parent of each vertex in our graph traversal. So, so this will help us in creating the DFS tree later. The next is traversal time. So in DFS, we also keep track when a node is first visited and when a node is fully visited, right? So, or we can say when a node become gray, that will be the start time. And when a node become black, that will be the end time for that given node or vertex. And finally, we will also create an empty list to store our DFS traversal output. So now we will initialize all the above variables. So what we are going to do, we are going to run a for loop over all the nodes. So that will be something like for node in adjacency list dot keys. First of all, we will set the color of each node to white. Then we are going to set the parent of each node to null, none. And then we will assign the traversal time. And then we will initialize the traversal time for each node. So this will be like traversal time for a node as minus one comma minus one. So we assume if the start time or end time of a given node is minus one, then this node is not visited at all. Let's try to print the values whatever we have assigned. So, so if we print the color dictionary, it is coming out to be. And also if we print the parent and we will print the traversal time. So as you can see, for all the nodes, the color is white. The parent of each node is none by default. And the traversal time, that is start time and end time is also minus one and minus one. It indicates that these vertices or these nodes are not visited. So now we will write the actual DFS algorithm. For that, we will create a function because DFS is a recursive algorithm. So we will write define DFS util. and the argument will be a source node from where we have to start the traversal of our DFS algorithm. Since we also want to keep track at what time which node is visited, we will create a global variable name time and we will initialize it with zero. And here we will use this global variable as global time. Okay. So as we have discussed, the first time we discover a node, we will change its color from white to gray. So whenever we start our DFS algorithm, suppose we started our DFS util from the vertex U, then we will change the color of the vertex U to gray. So this will be like color of U is equal to gray. Next is we will assign the time at which it is first explored or the time at which its color changed from white to gray. So this will be 
traversal time of node u and now we are assigning the start time the start time is represented by the zero index so this we will change equal to time so the next step is to add this node u to our dfs output so we will add so we will append u to our output list now we are going to iterate over all the adjacent vertex of u so this we can achieve using for v in adjacency list of u right first of all we will check whether this vertex is visited or not visited so we can check it simply by checking the color of that node so we will check using if color of node v is white it means it is not visited then we will continue our exploration or we will skip if it is not so if it is white we will change its parent of v to u because we are discovering or we are exploring the vertex v from the vertex u then what we are going to do because again the dfs is a recursive algorithm we will start a new dfs traversal considering the vertex v as source node so we will write dfs util v so this will explore all the vertex which are reachable from u after exploring all the adjacent vertex of u what we are going to do we are going to change its color so we will write color of u equal to black now and since now we have fully explored the vertex u we will change its traversal time or finish traversal time so finish traversal time we can access using traverse time traverse of u and final time is accessed using the index one so this we can assign using time every time what we can do when we explore a single node we will increase the time by one so i will explain just once again first of all what we have done we have de defined a global time variable that we will be using this for all the recursive calls so whenever we first explore a vertex let's say u we change its color to gray and whenever we change the color of any node from white to gray we will assign its start time when we start exploring that particular vertex so the start time can be accessed using traversal time of u and zero represent the start time so we assign it equal to the value of time and we also append the node of vertex u to our output list now what we do we recursively run dfs algorithm again on all the adjacent vertex right so it means that after this for loop we have covered all the adjacent vertex or we have explored all the adjacent vertex of u then we will change its color from gray to black here it means that this vertex is fully explored and now whatever will be the time when we finished exploration of the vertex u we will set it as the finish time so the finish time of a uh, vertex we can access using traverse time u and one index represent the finish time is equal to time and after each call of dfs util we will increase the time by one okay so uh, now we will try to run our dfs util function so assume we are starting our dfs search from the vertex a so considering the source vertex as a we will run our program so after running we will print our output so we will print dfs traversal output okay there is some error uh, here so okay in python we should use double equal to for comparison also tra time traversal is not written right so we will correct it so this is time traversal time and we will try to run it again okay so now we are able to get the right output if we look at the graph again so our output should be first we will go on to the root node then we will go on to the b then the children's of p which are d and e so the output should be a b d e f and then c so as we can see from here also our output is a b d e f and c okay we will try to print the other values also what parent and we will also print the time or traversal time for each node so as you can see using this parent we can create a dfs tree so from this we can infer that the parent of node c is a the parent of node a is none and the parent of node f is e and so on from the traversal time what we can infer is okay so now we will look at the traversal time okay from here we can see we missed one incrementation of time so whenever we change the color of a node we should increment the time by one so now if we run it again it should be fine yes so we can also print these values using for 
node in adjacency list dot keys and we'll print node and we'll print it something like this uh, just for good visualization traversal time of a given node so if i run this yes so what we can uh, infer from here is that the start time for the node a is 0 and end time for the node a is 11. if i want to show the same on a graph it will look something like this so if we show this on a graph so basically our uh, traversal will start from the node a so the start time is 0 then we will go on to the node b then start time for the node b will be 1 then we will go on to the node d and the start time for the node d is 2 but now there is no adjacent vertex for d means it is finished so end time of the vertex d will be 3 right then we'll go back onto the b and explore the next vertex for the vertex e the start time will be 4 then it will go to f then for the vertex f the start time will be 5 and so on so i'll i'm just writing it So from here, what we can infer that the node B, the start time and end time lie in the interval of 0 to 11. Or we can say that the 1 to 8 interval lie in the interval of 0 to 11. If we look in this complete graph, the start and end time of all the nodes are in the interval of 0 to 11. Or if we look in the uh, on the node D and E, then the start time and end time are lies in the interval of 1 to 8. From that, we can infer that these nodes, the nodes D, E, and F are visited through the node B, right? And from there, we can infer that all the other nodes are visited from the node A. So for now, I think that is enough for you to get an idea of it. Okay, so uh, let's take one more example to figure out whether we have implemented our DFS correctly or we, we can do some more modification. Now let's uh, now let's take one more example of a undirected graph. So in this example, uh, we can see the graph is splitted into two clusters and our base of DFS is to explore all the vertices. So if we represent this graph in adjacency list format, so this will be the adjacency list representation for this graph and if we run our algorithm on this graph then what we can see that out that our output is a b d and e from here we can see that we are able to run uh, to print a b d and e but the node c and f remains unvisited so what we can do we can change it such that instead of taking a source vertex we can run our dfs from each node if that node is not visited so how we can do it we will simply write for node in adjacency list dot keys or instead of node we can say it as u as a source vertex and we will check whether this source vertex u is visited or not so we can check it using if color of u is white it means it is not visited. If the node is not visited, then we will run our DFS algorithm considering this node U as source node. Now, if we run it again, okay. So now our DFS output is C, F, E, B, A, D. So here we are able to traverse all the vertices of the graph in a depth first search manner. Also, if it is not required to calculate time, you can skip that part also. So the use of time tracking I will cover in the subsequent video. Basically, it will be used for the topological shorting, also for the classification of the edges. So when we run our DFS, like in that case, if we run our DFS, there will be two trees formed. One will be A, B, D, E, or it will be something similar to that. And another tree will be C and F. So since multiple trees are formed in a DFS, that is why when we run DFS, the output is a DFS forest instead of a DFS tree. As compared to BFS, in BFS, when we run BFS algorithm, we only get a BFS tree. So that is the difference. So whenever we run DFS, we will get DFS forest instead of a tree because we are getting multiple trees. So we call it a forest. So I think that is all for today. So I know it is a little bit confusing, but I'll try to explain. So please don't hesitate to ask questions in the comment section.